All right, welcome back, Cold Lithium Blade Reviews. We got another blade here. We got the Viking 9th Century Tinker Pierce Sword. So this one is a sharpened variation of it. Uh, it has been touched up by our sharpening guy, but Hanway always puts a great edge on this one. So we'll take a look at this one, pretty simple one. Some specs, a little bit of work up close with it, and then some cut testing. Let's get to it. Cool. All right, take a look at some specs on the 9th Century Hanway Tinker Pierce Sword. We got a little bit over a 30 inch blade, so a pretty long blade if you're looking at a single hand sword that is. Um, if we look at this from the side profile, I'm right about six feet tall. From the hip, right where my belt is, all the way up to the top of my head, it was a little bit over the top of it, maybe about an inch to like two and a half inches. If you bring the tip all the way down to the belt, it would just about almost touch the floor, showing you got full protection from your high line all the way through, and then all the way from the low line, protecting your full low line of your knees all the way above your head, low line all the way above your head, back down the high line. So pretty sweet blade, double edge like I said before, 5160 high carbon steel for this blade. So Hanway does an excellent job with, with Viking swords, they have some of my favorite as far as this goes. Uh, the tip has been sharpened. These have all been touched up as far as the edge goes. This is not a factory edge. This is a custom edge that they put on. If you're looking to do that add-on for this one, you can totally do that. Just gotta click the little link that goes with this blade. And we'll be able to take care of that for you. Let me sheet this really quick so you can see it. Taking a look at the handle. We've got a high carbon steel handle coming through. A little bit of some more traditional Viking designs with this handle. Notice this is kind of a short grip but it allows you to really keep some security and structure through that, through the grip. Hardwood handle, leather wrapping around it for grip, so whether you have gloves on or not, doesn't matter, still gonna be really secure in the hand. And you'll also see, like I said before, heel of the hand really stuck in there, and even the knuckle lining, nice and slim. What I really like about this handle, it's not a circular handle, so contrary to the Gladius, the Pico Gladius that we just reviewed for this month, that's a good handle too, but everybody's got preferences for handles, right? So that's why we offer a little bit of everything that we can from different origins, different blade cultures through the world at Cult of Athena. So for this one, we're taking a look at a flat handle. It kind of tapers out and gets fat toward the middle. And it also has a little bit of thickness on like the actual width of the handle. So if you kind of look at it, it's hard to see because it's a black handle, but it's not just straight across. It's a little bit thicker toward the middle. And then if you look at it from straight on, you'll notice that it's not straight down. It's a little bit thinner toward the pinky, gets wider, and then goes a little bit thinner toward the forefinger, allowing you to have a full secure grip on this one. Kind of obvious for it being a single hand sword, but you'll see that it obviously has all the slashing capabilities. You've got the thrust, and honestly, for how long of a blade this is, it's actually really easy to maneuver around with. You're not going to really be doing a whole lot of flurries or types of like really heavy manipulations with it, but if you need a really good cut, it's really simple to be able to get that around or even get a direct thrust as well. Let's do some close-up looks at this blade in the scabbard, out of the scabbard, then we'll move into cut testing and see what this blade can do.
Okay. All right, so taking a look at this blade, we're gonna take it and do some cut testing with it. We got the tatami mat set up, do some cut testing with this 9th century Hanwei Tinker Pierce sword. I already really like the handle on this one, so we'll do some cut testing on it and see what it can do. So you'll see on the blade, if you're not familiar with swords, maybe you are, but if you're not, that little bump in the middle, a little fuller, that really helps with when you're cutting through because it's decreasing mass. It's also decreasing excess weight in the blade as well. So pretty sweet. Let's try to cut it again. Let's try to get a second shot off with this blade. Get a back hand this time. Coming out. Boom. Yeah, hang on by literally like a thread. That's gonna dramatically unfold now. <laughs> cool, let's see if I can pop this sucker down. There we go. Kinda knocked it down more than anything. But yeah, cuts really well. Feels really good in the hand. I will say, and this is just my personal preference, if you work with a lot of Viking type of handles like this, might not bother you. For me, I don't really work with them a lot. Uh, heel, the hand is really pressing in. It's not anything painful by any means, but I can definitely really feel that grip. And it's something that if you are to break your wrist early, I do feel that more here. But when I keep a solid grip, like a hammer grip, I can pull all the way through. No problem at all on the blade, really solid. Ready? All right. All right, thanks for joining me for this blade review. Colt of Athena Hanway Tinker Pierce 9th Century Viking Sword, the sharp version, even though it has been sharpened as well. Did some close-up looks at it, some specs. Also did a little bit of cut testing so you can see how efficient this blade really is. Uh, my favorite feature was probably the handle. I want you to let me know what was your favorite feature on this blade. Comment below, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you want to see in the reviews in the coming future, and I will talk to you soon.